Robert uh, was a doubter, liked the show, but was a doubter. And here is his email. Robert says, I never thought I'd be saying this, but you were right. I have been a loyal listener for about 10 years. And I always took your advice with a grain of salt. I felt I was a good judge of character. But I was wrong. Recently, I quit my job and moved across the country to be with my girlfriend in New York. Oh, Jesus. We had been together in Los Angeles for two and a half years. And things were perfect. She was not like the women you warned us about. She didn't want kids. She was financially responsible. She was totally committed to the relationship. No baggage. She was smart and caring. And we were best friends. In addition to being a couple. When I was sick, she stayed by my side. And help me through it. We supported each other. We were a team. When she got into nursing school in New York, I knew that I would not be following her. I'm sorry. I knew that I would be following her. We had been living together in Los Angeles for almost two years at this point. And I couldn't imagine my life without her. Because our Los Angeles apartment lease was not up for several months, I decided I would stay in L.A. over the summer while she established herself in New York and attended summer semester. Our plan was to join up in September. We were separated for a little less than three months. And during this time, I sent her drawings, photos, mixed CDs, and even appliances for the apartment that we would soon be sharing when I came to live with her. She didn't send me very much, but I accepted that she was busy with school. It was, after all, a rigorous program. At the end of August, I moved out and arrived in New York. I got settled in the new apartment, and, as I was putting away my things... I came across a mix CD that I did not recognize. She suddenly became very nervous, and I questioned her about it. She lied and told me that she made it for me but never gave it to me because she didn't like how it turned out. She then took it and broke it in half so I couldn't hear it. We argued over the next few days, and eventually, she admitted that she cheated on me over a period of two weeks in July. Some guy in a bar, probably one of your students, was persistent about getting her number, and finally did. They had sex in our bed at least a dozen times, she told me. And she was starting to develop feelings for him. Right before I was to arrive, she broke it off with him. She was hoping I would never find out about it, and she just allowed me to uproot my life and move across the country without telling me all this. Now I have no choice but to move out and break up with her. Tom, you were right. I really, truly never thought it could happen to me. I thought we were different. I am amazed that I could have been such a poor judge of character. I am usually distrustful by nature. So when I trust someone, it is a rare thing. The good news is that she will have to move out too. Because we were living in university couples housing. So at least she will have to pay for her mistake. I hear that it can be hard to find housing in Manhattan. Good thing I'll be back in sunny L.A. 
So, another listener, Robert, thank you for that honest report from the field. Here is another listener who thought he knew more than the professor. He thought he knew best. He thought you could send your girlfriend to New York for the summer and that she'd be faithful and loyal and waiting for him. But come on, a young woman just arrived in New York City, there for the first time, living on a college campus. Are you kidding me? <laughs> of course every guy in town is going to be after her. And of course, after she's alone enough nights, at some point she'll say, Oh, I got drunk and one thing led to another. And this is what happens. When your girl if you insist on having a relationship, when your girl says, I'm going to school in New York, or I'm going to school in Madrid, or I'm going to school in San Francisco, or wherever she says she's going, that's the time to say, you know what? It's been a good run. It's been very nice knowing you. Because it's my belief that in nine out of ten cases, this is what you're going to end up with. This is what you're going to get. God, it must be painful for this guy. Really painful. I've warned you about this. I have told you on this program there is no such thing as a long-distance relationship. Long-distance relationships are relationships in which both parties or one party has sex with someone else while the two people are apart. Sometimes it's just one party having sex and the other person sending mixed CDs and Saying, I can't wait, cupcake, until we're together again. Sometimes it's both sides. But there really is no such thing as a long-distance monogamous relationship. They don't exist. I told you that, but of course, as Robert said in his email, he thought they were different. They were not different. It was the same old story. The same. Every now and then I like to find out when you thought you knew more than the professor. You went in direct violation of the wisdom imparted on this program, of the stories I've told you, of the experience I've shared with you. Personal, painful experiences where I have been cut to the quick. I tell you what's happened. I try to keep you from being burned the way I was. And yet, somehow you thought you were smarter than me and you went ahead and did your own thing like Robert did and you found out the hard way. If you're one of these people, if you thought you knew more than the professor, if you went out and broke the rules and got burned like Robert who wrote the email, now is the time to write in and tell me about it. Tom, Tom, like it, like it. 1 800 5800 Tom, 1 800 5800 866. Do you have kids? By design, I do not. You don't? By design. By design? Yes. That's the thing. By dictionary. Stupid bitch. It's the Tom Likey Show. It's the Tom Likey Show. At 1 800 800 Tom, that's our telephone number. All right, you thought you knew more than the professor. Every once in a while, we catch up with people who thought they knew more and they got burned. People like you. James on the Tom Likey Show. Hello. Hey, Dad, how you doing? All right, sir. Uh, yeah, I broke the three-date rule. How many times did you break it? Uh, well, when I, this is when I first started listening to you, and um, I think I think I went on like maybe about four or five dates with her, and I think I'm, I'm guesstimating here about like five hundred dollars. So you not only went over the number of dates, you spent five hundred dollars. Yes, I did. Because if you went on four dates, that would be, what, $160? Right. Uh, but uh, um, it's not an excuse, but uh, one of the reasons why uh, it's that high is because um, actually it was for a concert, and I paid a lot of money. Um, to, what, have uh, I to well, what have I told you about concerts? Uh, like I said, that this was like within the first year I started listening, and I didn't know anything about, you know, taking girls to concerts and all that stuff. It was so, you know, like I said, I never broke the rule after... After um, I learned it, I never broke it again, but, you know. Yeah. I mean, if you have to pay a facility fee for Ticketmaster, uh, it's not for a date. Gotcha. Gotcha. Because I'll tell you what, the facilities fees for Ticketmaster are usually more than 40 bucks. 
Oh, yeah. Just the fees. <laughs> I learned that firsthand. Like I said, I'll, I'll, I'll never break it again. But, you know, I, I, this is the case where, you know, she really wanted to go. And I thought that, you know, if I was, you know, get those tickets, you know, I, I thought I was going to get some. And I, I, I did get some eventually, but uh, I, like, spent a lot of money doing it. And, I, you know, I, with that money, I might have might as well just went out and got, like, a hooker or something. That, yeah, you would have gotten more sex. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So did you uh, d did you try to, to go for it? Did you try to, to, to get her to put out? Yeah, she, I, did. I did. She did eventually, but it wasn't on the night uh, that we went on the concert, though. Mm-hmm. But, you know, she did eventually put out. And it eventually. never really went. Yeah, eventually. And it never really went anywhere after that because, you know, the sex was horrible. But, um, I mean, it definitely wasn't worth the price of admission. <laughs> I'll tell you that. So. Hey, I, uh, I, just, I don't blame you. I, <laughs> I gotta tell you something. When you spend too much money, when you waste too much time and energy with a chick, this is what you generally get. Yeah. And was it? Here's the big question. Of course, uh, we already know the answer. Was it worth waiting for? And the answer was, of course. Hell no. Hell no. Hell no. Hell no. <laughs> no. That's that's why I tell you. If it's if it takes more than three dates, there's no chemistry. Right, and I should I should have been able to pick up on that, you know, in the beginning. I mean, I guess maybe I wore it down or something like that. Uh, maybe she felt obligated to, you know, after that amount of time and you know amount of money, because I'm pretty sure she knew how much money I spent for those tickets. Um, so maybe she felt guilty, you know, maybe I guilt I guilted her into you know giving it up. So of you got a mercy hump. Yeah. So uh, I mean, it definitely wasn't you know for the purpose of that. I, I mean, that I was hoping for that maybe you know she was into me or maybe she will, will eventually become into me, but. Uh, yeah, it was, it was definitely not worth it. And I like that at the time I knew about the three day rule. I mean, that's when you're really, really, when you're really starting to hammer it home to like some of your uh, other callers not to go on, not to go past the three day rule, especially in regards to costs, you know, over the $40 rule. But I thought, well, you know, man, you know, she really wanted to go. And I'm pretty sure, you know, this would like probably get her, you know, uh, to go. And <laughs> like I said, I, I just. But it doesn't uh, work that way. Buying chick stuff doesn't make them aroused. I mean, it I, doesn't. I I'm sorry, go ahead, Dad. No, I'm just saying buying chick stuff doesn't make them aroused. Chemistry makes them aroused. And by the way, having chemistry has nothing to do with how you look. It's all about chemistry. If you don't have chemistry, you can't create it. Right. Definitely. And you can't buy it. And there are definitely signs. I mean, hey, guys listening, hey, you know, there are definitely signs when you're on a date with a chick, you know, whether or not she's into you. I mean, body language body language is definitely um, a big thing. And, you know, looking back at it now, I mean, I can tell. I mean, I can tell right then and there she was not into me. Hey, it was just. Uh, it was just, you know, you know, her body language, you know, her the the way she um, the way she talked to me, it was just like maybe, she, or it wasn't maybe, it was she was just was not into me. I, she was not into me at all. So, and it doesn't mean that uh, other women wouldn't be into you. It's just her. That's all. Maybe she has bad taste. Maybe she doesn't know what she's doing. Yeah, and I, I mean, I really, I mean, after I really started taking your your rules to heart, I never really had a problem with any chicks after that. You know, so. Um, yeah, I definitely picked the wrong one that time. <laughs> I picked the wrong one, and uh, definitely a wrong time. I picked the wrong time to uh, to uh, violate you know one of your rules. <laughs> At the time you were violating the rules, though, you knew you were violating them, right? Right. The three date rule, definitely. I knew I was violating that one. Yes. And uh, you got what you paid for. <laughs> well, you I don't got know. you got mercy sex yeah. from a chick who was not into you. Yeah. 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 And uh, you could have gotten the same result having spent one quarter the money. Yeah, I mean, with some you know chick on the street or something, you know. So, uh, so uh, I tell you this: that I will never break one of your rules again, ever, ever. Well, I'm I'm, I'm glad you finally figured it out uh, because uh, again, what I tell you on the radio is based on personal experience. You see, I had all this pain. I did all the things I tell you not to do. And because I did these things, I come on the radio to warn you. Yeah. And and so you can you can believe that when I tell you something like this, it's because I suffered the way you suffered. And you did not need to go through this. I just I I 
I should have paid, I should have paid more attention. I should have followed the rules. I, and like I said to everyone listening now, I mean, take. I mean, you just heard one. You just heard one story, and I'm pretty sure you're going to hear a lot more. This should just this should just you know remind you guys never to break any of Tom's rules. You know, it's in your best interest not to do so. Hey, uh, Dad, can you take me out with a big bong rip and a thank you, Jesus? Here they come. Thank you, Jesus. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. That's our telephone number. I'm talking about the things you've done that I warned you against. You thought you knew more than I did. You went ahead and did your own thing, and you learned the hard way. One eight hundred five eight hundred eight six six. That's our telephone number. Luke on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Oh boy, here we go. <laughs> You're going to chew me out, Dad. Um. I'm not only calling to tell you what I think I might have done wrong, but I'm also calling to ask for advice. Um, I met this one MILF and uh, got attached to her and uh, got attached to her kids. We, uh, after uh, about a year of knowing each other, we moved in. And uh, I've always been there for her for whatever she needed, even when her car got repoed. Well, um I wanted to buy a truck anyway, so I bought a truck and I let her use it, and she has been using it for the past uh, uh, almost year and a half, two years. And uh, she's never been there for me, like, uh, you know, never there. Uh, whenever I need her help, she's not there. Uh, whenever she uh, needs to borrow money, I let her borrow money, but whenever I need to borrow money, uh, she pitches a, uh, a complaint about it, you know? And uh, so our lives are, you know, are not matching. So we Well, they never that, matched. Uh, you never had any interest in having kids. You certainly never had any interest in raising some other guy's kids or being there and having responsibility for some other guy's kids. You had no interest in that. You thought you had a fine piece of ass and you were willing to pay the price of admission. Well... Yeah, I guess so, but uh, I do have kids myself, you know, and uh, I, I did grow attached to her kids. And uh, wait a minute, did I you move your kids in with her kids? Uh, they're they're on over uh, on the weekend, you know. So you have actually mixed up your kids in your love life. Yeah, and you mixed your kids up with her kids. Yep, all to get laid. Well, at first, yeah, but uh, eventually I, I got feelings for her. Well, why do you have feelings for somebody who clearly doesn't care about you? Stupidity, I guess. Right. But, uh, anyways, uh, we decided... And aren't you, that, uh, didn't you, weren't you worried about the effect that would have on your own kids? Yeah. No, you weren't, because you let the kids uh, hang out there anyway. Yep, they are attached to uh, her kids, and uh, they're, you know, they like the place that we live at. So it's going to be tough, but uh, we did decide that we're going to be uh, splitting up, and we're and I'm moving out. Um, now, now, I, have, if you've learned anything here, Luke, are you still having sex with this woman? Um, haven't for about a week. A week, Luke. Do not have sex with her again. Really? Of course, if you're moving out, this is the time that women like this decide they're going to forget about their birth control and try to have a memento of you. Well, I'm sick. Oh, okay. But, uh, yeah, you do have a point there, but... Uh, um, On top I of that, having sex with her sends a mixed message. You know, women connect sex and love. Hmm. A woman might think you care about her by having sex with her. Now, if you're not living with a woman or you are, uh, you know, not involved, uh, you're not committed in any way, well, then who cares if, if that's how she feels? But you're living with her. Right. And her kids. Well, having sex with her sends a mixed message. Sorry, okay. having sex with her. 
Well, that's really hard not to do because I'm, you know, I live there and uh, still am very attracted to her. But you have to say, look, there are some times you have to uh, be the man and step up to the plate and say, look, we're breaking up. This doesn't make any sense to do this. Hmm. Yeah. Well, I was going to stick around for about a month or two. And, Why, uh, so you could get a few more bangs in? No, actually, so I could uh, wait for the condo that I'm going to be buying. You're waiting for a con. I didn't say you can't live there. Oh, yeah, are you a prostitute? You're a gigolo? You have to have sex in order to stay there? No. All right. So you can stay there, just don't have sex with her. I'll try not to. Well, don't give me the try not to business. Don't cop out. You're going to have sex with her. I can already hear it. But you're, I'm telling you now, you already did what I told you not to do, and you got burned. I'm warning you, don't do what I tell you not to do again. Right. Because I'm telling you, this. It, do you know that I once had, uh, I've told this story on the radio, so I'm going to condense it. There was a woman I had had a relationship with, and I cheated on her. And I felt so badly, I moved out. By the way, she wanted to resolve everything, she wanted to fix everything, and I was like, I felt horrible that she caught me. And so I moved out, moved in with the other chick who turned out to be a total psychotic bitch. And when I got thrown out of my place and she changed the locks on me, this is the woman I had the affair with, who was there waiting to pick up my pieces? It was my ex-girlfriend, the one I cheated on. She said, come back, you can crash on the sofa until you figure out what you're going to do. Nobody else, no friends, no relatives, nobody else would take me in but her. So I came and I slept on the couch. And she spent her time trying to lure me back into bed. Had I gone back to bed, I would have stayed there. Because she would have just pretended nothing happened and then we would have just gone on with our lives. You don't want that to happen. If you have decided to leave, you have to be consistent. Hang on a second here. Rachel, what did you want to say to Luke? Hi, Daddy. Hi, um, dear. I just wanted to tell him that he's a moron. Okay? If you're going to have kids, sweetie, you don't outside your kids. All right, all right darling. Uh, we have a zero tolerance policy. Unfortunately, you can't use the P word in that context. So we're going to have to say goodbye to you. Uh, but we will keep Luke on the air here. We did bleep that, right? Great. Okay. So uh, let's keep Luke on the phone here, and let's say hello to Joe. Joe also has some spicy commentary here for you. Joe, what do you want to say to Luke? Luke, you, you seem like the stupidest human being who's called the show in a while. I was, I was telling the... The screener, Tom ought to be able to, like, push a button and electrocute lamos like you and protect the gene pool. You know, like in that early James Bond movie where electric Blofeld electrocutes the traitor? I mean, and that gal who just got off the phone's right. You, when you meet a gal who's got kids and she instantly puts her kids in the path of you, that's, that's a sign that she's not thinking straight, man. That's not good for her kids. It wasn't good for your kids wasn't good for you, and you're still sitting there trying to this dope that she's peddling between her legs, man. You're, you're strung out, and you don't have the willpower to quit. You need some kind of 12-step program, or maybe just do us all a favor and just check out, man, because she's got your truck, she's got your wallet, and she's got your cojones, your huevos uh, firmly in her grasp, and she doesn't even like them that much, but they're worth money to her. She is a leech, man, and, and you were allowing this leech to just tap you out and f fouling up your kids, and this, this is going to be bad for your kids. Hasn't done her kids any good. Well, she's thoughtless, man. Yeah, but she's needy. She needed your money. This is a one-way deal. It's all, all for one and all for her. <laughs> Dude, just end it all, man. Tom, bong me to Jesus. All right, here you go, Joe. Thank you, Jesus! Now, uh, Luke, what do you think about that? I think both of your callers are right, and I think you're right. Um, but I did at first uh, 
In, well, not at first, but I did think that uh, it was going to turn into a serious relationship, but obviously it's not. So, Any relationship where you have to pay for entry is not a serious relationship. Yeah, I guess so. Well, um... I got one more. Uh, don't rush off on me here, uh, Luke. Let me get uh, Philip on the line here. Philip, what did you want to say to Luke? Hey, uh, first time there, Tom. Uh, Luke, <laughs> you're an idiot. I don't care what you do with your life, screwing with your kid's life and that other girl's life. What are you smoking, man? I left my wife and my kids. They didn't meet anything that I dated, ever. Until it was a serious enough relationship. They got enough stuff in their head. You don't need to screw with them. And that's about all I got to say. You're just an idiot. What do you think, Luke? Yeah, it's a hard lesson to learn. I imagine it is. Eric, what did you want to say to Luke? Luke, man, I want to know what you're doing. You called and said, Tom, I want your advice. Tom, give me your advice. And now you want to argue with everything he says. Are you calling for affirmation for your stupidity? Or are you calling for advice? If you're calling for advice, listen. Take it apart. You screwed up once. Listen to somebody who's got a plan. You're pretty screwed up. You admitted you screwed up. You asked for help. Look to take the help or don't waste everybody's time. Pretty right. Simple. Well, the, the only thing that I've left of uh, arguing about is... Uh, you know, having sex. Dude, why, why would you do it? You've already totally screwed your kids up by bringing them in. There, there should be nothing that goes in front of your kids. Not your own junk, not her stuff. Nothing goes in front of your kids. You already screwed that up. Listen. Don't screw it up anymore. Walk, dude. you got to walk. Take the advice that's given to you. You're the one who picked up the phone and made the call and said, Hey, I screwed up. I need advice. Now you don't like what you hear, so you want to argue it? Man up. Man up. Take your kids. Get out. Run, dude. Run. Fix what you broke as best as you can. And that means no more sex with her. Yeah, absolutely. Right. Because I'm telling you, it sends a mixed message. You know, I always use the analogy on the program. Have you ever uh, had a stray animal at your door? Stray dog, stray cat? Yeah, you feed it. You, you feed it the first time because it's so cute. And there it is eating. And, oh, look, he's eating. Look, he's hungry and he's eating. Ooh. And then the, the next day the cat comes back. And you feed it again. Oh, look, it's eating. Ooh, okay. Well, you know what? About seven or eight days later, this is not fun anymore. It's an obligation. And the cat is scratching on the door and meowing and hissing and demanding and uh, rubbing up against your leg like, like saying, come on already, where's the food? And you're tired of it. But the fact is, you feed it again just because now the cat is demanding. Now, you say to yourself, why won't this cat leave? Right? Why and won't I, the cat leave, Luke? I gave it what I what it wanted. You gave it what it wanted even after you said, I'm tired of this. Yeah. Good analogy. So you can't you can't be doing this. If if you're definitely leaving, definitely stop having sex with her. All right, and um, the whole thing with um, her using my truck for transportation, uh, take that away, of course, too. And uh, when I move out, everything's gone, done. That's it. And that means you're not coming back to play with her kids, hard as that may be. You're not going to be doing a visitation as if you're a divorced dad. You're going to cut it off. And that's good for the kids, too, by the way. Bad well, in the one, short term, good in the long run. Well, one of her kids is uh, 20, and uh, and he's in a band. So, uh, 
is it still okay for him to invite me to a concert and me go? He's an adult? Yeah. Yeah, well, if he's an adult, I guess you could do what you like, but uh, no going over and playing with minor children. No. All right. And no going over to her house anymore, either. When you're gone, you're gone. All right. You have to do it. You're right. All right, look. Let me know how you make out. Okay? All right. Please. Thanks a lot for the call. Tom Lighty. Who's that? 1 800 5800 Tom. Tom. 1 800 5800 866. Lighty. Spirit, philosophy, and everything, man. You're the master. You're not father. You're the master. The Tom Lighty Show. talking about a listener named Robert who emailed me told me that uh, well loyal listener for about 10 years but he thought he knew more than I did went ahead got involved with a woman who moved to New York from Los Angeles to study nursing and he stayed behind in LA to clean up uh, unfinished business and by the time he got to New York he found out his girl was uh, cheating on him when she was there by herself and so he admitted that uh, I knew more than he did, and I'm talking to people who uh, realize the hard way that I knew more than they did. Is that you? Call me. 1-800-5800-TOM is our number. 1-800-5800-866. Angel on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hi, Tom. Hi. How are you, Tom? Great. Okay, listen, uh, I, you know, I'm the same uh because the other guys I knew, I thought I knew more than you do. But even though I kind of, kind of, you know, knew probably that what I was doing, I don't know. I think I fell in love with this woman. She's she's a she's a single mom. Oh. And even though you know I just wanted some, you know, but I started going out with her. So it started out with her like for like almost a year. So I got hooked to her. You know, I, I now now. I don't know what to do, Tom. I'm, I, I think I'm in love with her because I, you know, I, I want her. I don't know what can I do in order for me either to get game or what should I do to. I cannot how to get away from her. I don't know why. I got kind of used to her. You got used to her, but uh, come on, did you want to be a parent? Uh, not really. She got already two kids, and uh, and we haven't had any any sex anyway at all yet. What? Yeah. Wait. What? Can you believe that, Tom? Yes, I believe you're a pussy. Absolutely. I guess I am. I don't know. I mean, uh, I don't know. Is it? Uh, what would be the best thing to do? He run away, but at the same time, I can't because I'm. I don't know. I, I can't. Guess. Yeah, you realize how many women you could be having sex with that you're not because you're committed to this chick. Well, yeah, well, I don't think, she doesn't, I don't think she demands anything from me, probably just going out, you know, and probably inviting her for lunch, things like that, you know, but other than that, she doesn't demand any other, other, any other thing, so... But why way, are you doing it? Why are you doing it? Because I like being with her, I enjoy, you know... Well, you enjoy a woman who's not attracted to you? She's a... She's attractive no, to me, but she she's not. Wanna, she doesn't want to give it up. I don't know she, why. Well, she's given it up to others. I don't know that. Why? I mean. Wait a minute. Was she married? Yes, yeah, she was. Yeah, how'd that work out for her? Uh, she said she hasn't. She doesn't like to, you know unless she she has. She's in a relationship. I mean, really uh, but, but you think you are? You think you are in a relationship? Uh, well, she considered me her friend, her really good friend, but other than that, she doesn't want to go beyond that. But that means she's not attracted to you. Is 
something I can do to do so, you know, like, for some game and at least get some and that's it. Probably that's what I want and then run away probably. Well, but the, the point is you don't have a relationship. She's not interested. She told you. So should I leave it alone? No. Of course! Uh, it's hard for me to She talk to told her. you. Wait a minute. She told you she's not interested. Well, she has said she liked me as a friend. She that, a friend. What, she I, you know what I like me as I like you as a friend means? Not really. It means I am never going to have sex with you no matter what. I'm hoping that somewhere along the way she will change her mind. That is not going to happen. You see, the time people are interested, the time chemistry ignites, is when two people meet. If there is no chemistry when two people meet, it is not created in the laboratory later on. It is there or it is not. Oh. Let's say you take two compounds, okay? okay. Let's say you take, uh, what's that, what is that acid they always do with the potato? Uh, they always do some uh, acid uh, test with a potato. Dean, do you remember that? When you were in science class, they would take a potato and they would put it with an acid, and then the potato would turn black. Now, let's say you took a, a substance, some acid, and you put it with a potato, and the potato looked like a potato, and it continued to look like a potato. Do you think it would turn black sometime down the line? I guess it will, yeah. No, it wouldn't. If it doesn't happen right away, it's not going to happen. It's not. No, chemistry is there, or it's not. Well, at, yeah, I think at first I lost my chance because at first she was really into me. She wanted to go out with me all the time, be with me all the time. But then, as you know, time went by, I just, she, I was not interested in her at all that much. I mean, I want just to be her company, but not really, you know, wanted sex from her. You are, her gay, you are her gay friend. Do you know that? You're her gay friend who she I, confides in. And by the way, when she meets a man she is physically attracted to, the first person she's going to call with the good news is you. Really? That's right. Yo, Angel, I wanted you to be the first to know. I met somebody, and he's wonderful. And because you're my friend, I knew you'd understand. That's where this is going. Yeah, you know... There is something interesting that I think she found a guy she, she also hang, hangs out with, but at the same time she wants to hang out with me too, but... Because she know, needs her she, gay friend to talk to. But she sent me mixed messages, still like she wants me, but then at the same time, just, you know... She's not sending you mixed messages. She said she just wants you as a friend. Yeah, That's right. not a mixed oh. message. That's a very direct message. You yeah, don't yeah. understand. It's like us speaking Chinese. You just don't understand Chinese. Let me translate for you. Okay. I just want you as my friend means I'm not attracted to you. Okay, so a good idea would be just to get away because I'm so attached to her now that, you know, I want something Because you have been delusional. You are attached to a woman who is not attracted to you does not find you attractive, will not have sex with you under any circumstances. And you know what you're going to do? You're going to stay there and stay there and stay there until she tells you she's getting married. And she wanted you to be the first to know. You know, you're right. I'm just, I, I stay there because I'm just hoping someday she will give it up. But it doesn't know. work that way. No. Uh, so what was the solution in here, Tom? The solution is get the hell out of there. Oh, God. That's going to hurt a lot. Get used to it. Okay. She so will never, ever, ever have sex with you. Ever. Never, ever. Ever. Well, she told me one time to, you know, we can go out somewhere far away, you know. And fine, and she's going to bring her flannel nightgown, and she's going to sleep in the other bed. Really? Yes. Well, she she mentioned something like this time, you know, this time is gonna be like your time, you know. You we gonna you gonna do what you wanna do with me, and that say, oh wow, well then I go. Yeah, well, we, meaning you can take me on a vacation that you'll pay for. You can take me away for the weekend that you'll pay for. Yeah. 
Well, but then she said she she kind of kind of uh, you know uh, not directly. She said you will finally get it, something like that, you know. So she's just jerking your chain. So it will be a waste of time then to take this trip. Waste of time and money. Correct. Uh, well, well, even though. Well, Tom, so there is nothing I can do in here. Just yes, get away, then. Get away. Okay. Follow okay, the rules. Tom. Thank you for your advice, Tom. Well, I'm here to help. Angel, I appreciate the call. Thanks for calling in. The Tom Likes Show.